This is part of the part of Kuka, so it's very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. the Paraduma, we know the red heifer. The Raman brings down his mom brings down it's very fascinating halokha about the Paraduma, about the red heifer. He says that basically, generally, with a lot of types of tumor, a lot of types of impurity that exist, you know, that, that uh, if someone has to go to the mikvah to remove that impurity before they can go into the mikvah. They touch a cherub, certain types of dead animals, they touch the body, they become tummy. They go to mikvah, and then they're called what's called a yom, meaning that they immerse in the mikvah, but they're still not pure until the night falls. That they immerse during the day, the purity doesn't come until nighttime. That they need harat shemesh, it needs to become nighttime before the full purity. They're kind of in a limbo state that we call a yom, someone who immerses during the daytime. Now, um, the halakha is, what we receive, halakha Moshe Mishinai, is that a shul yom is allowed to, uh, to make the paraduma. Uh, that all he needs to do, and the one who's preparing the paraduma, the level of purity he has to be on is only enough purity in, in order to, that he goes to mikvah. That's the level of purity that he needs. He doesn't have to go <coughs> that next extra step. The the, the summer you would have to prepare it at night. If the paraduma was something, the red heifer, the burning of the ashes, to, that was something that's done during the daytime. You didn't need to wait till nighttime. Now it says so. It says the oichadi tahor, right? That that a pure person has to be the one who's preparing this is gathering together. So we know that in our history, we've had a, a, a plague that plagued us throughout our history, that we have these different heretical sects that exist, different epicores and different groups that popped up throughout our history. In the time of the Second Temple, the one such group is the Sadukim, they call them English the Sadducees, and it's pretty sad to see them. But they do. They didn't believe in all traditions that we had, that the oral Torah, they didn't believe in rabbinical law, which is separate from the oral tradition. There's the oral traditions that we receive that are Torah law, and then the Torah also requires us to follow rabbinical law. They're both what we call Torah Shabbat, but there's two different aspects. So this is particularly a, a Torah law that, according to the Torah, he doesn't have to wait till nighttime in order to prepare the paraduma, And yet, the Tzadukim said, no, you have to wait till nighttime because it has to be pure. So the, and unfortunately, many of the Kohanim, and many of the Kohanim Gedolim, many of the high priests, and many of the priests were Tzadukim. We, we read in the Gemara Numa that year after year, the Kohen Gedolim, the high priest would die when he went to the Kohen Kedoshim, when he went to the Holy Holies in the Kippur, because he wasn't really worthy for that, for that uh, office. Anyway, so this, the Chachamim saw that this is what was happening, so they made a very interesting law. Now, you don't have to be on this, what we call this limbo level, this school yom, in order to, it's just that you're allowed to be. So they went out of their way, even a humra of the Suzuki, to, to be mako, that they were lenient and not to be strict like the Suzuki, that what they actually did, the Rambam says, and brought in the Gemara, that they would take a cherub, they would take some kind of uh, a lizard or, or some kind of an animal or a mouse, and touch the person who was who was uh, who was preparing the paraduma. It only happened very few times in our history that they even prepared the paraduma. <coughs> it says the first one was made by Moshe Rabbeinu, and then all the way. Until the destruction of the first temple, they still were just adding water to the ashes, and it was good enough. You didn't need to do it again. Then Ezra made one, and then it lasted for a long time too. And then eventually, later on, they had to prepare. Sometimes it'd be twice in the, or three times in the lifetime of a particular leader that they would be preparing the paraduma and were waiting that they could be able to do it again. So 
a few times it happened that when they prepared it, what they actually had to do is go out of their way to make this person impure and then put him in the mikvah, but specifically not wait till night time in order to abrogate that opinion of the Tzadukim that said, no, that, that you have to be not here and wait till night time. That's an incredible thing when you think about that. And it teaches a tremendous lesson on how far we have to go to separate ourselves from groups that do not identify with the true, with the Torah true philosophy. And it's very interesting in the version that we have of Birka Taminim, the original version of how Achenu Asfardim had the Laminim that start out that we uh, wish to, to the downfall of the heretics. Our version says Lumalkinim, the informers, the ones who make him trouble for us. Why? And I think that's the big lesson here. You know, it, it does, what does it hurt us that these groups, that they, you know, so, so are a girl wants to put on filling. Isn't that more true? To do more mixed groups. What could be, what, what's wrong with that? A girl putting on filling, the same thing. And, and halakhically, we even have justification. You can see it says here and there. And this one didn't, why not do it? But we see specifically the Chachamim is to go out of the way even to be more strict and, and if it's following a way that's a, a heretical path, we're not allowed to do. We go, we go out of the way to be lenient, to not follow, and it's really not strict because when you really learn the laws, like for example, with the Tzillin, there's a lot of laws about Tzillin. And if, if you're not fulfilling those laws, you wind up doing a bigger sin. So let's say, this is a, you know, let's say a woman, she does fulfill a mitzvah by putting on Tzillin, but she would do, there could be ways of putting on film that would be actually a sin because it would be an insult to the film. So it winds up that their idea of being more strict really winds up and, and it causing it not even to be more lenient, but actually causing an actual sin in a, in a place where there's no obligation. And that's why we don't wear film all day like they did in the old days because of that same reason. But ultimately, the biggest danger is the the ones they're making problems, you know. Right now, there's a, a case like this, uh, you know. From you know, everyone's talking about these different groups, even within Orthodoxy, they're popping up and having different ideas. But what does that hurt us if they do this or that? It doesn't hurt. But then, when one of their fellows he comes up and he's trying to make problems, stirring up political fights that we see going on, we see these things going on in Muncie and other places. Somebody going, look, I'm a rabbi, I'm an Orthodox rabbi, and I'm fighting against this, that, you know, they're, they're not being, you know, uh, they're not doing the right thing, and he's really making problems. I mean, making problems for everybody. And even the people he's trying to help, he's not really trying to help them. It's really, that's what comes out of heresy, is the damage that it does. And, and uh, you know, I, I remember one Rabbi, who I know, he says he doesn't care if someone from another religion thinks he's going to heaven or hell as long as he doesn't do anything to get us there quicker. You know? So those types of people that are right, that we have difference in opinion, we can work with them, we can deal with them, but when the people they take it to that next step, the Lamalkin and Alpin Sikta, that's already crossing a line. And that was the major reason why the Khazal made such a harkha against the Sadukim because they were causing tremendous problems within Kalitrail. They brought tremendous devastation to our people on all levels. Their spiritual flaws manifested eventually into material damage as well. And so for that reason, we, 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 the Chazal instilled in us this Hashkafa to go out of our way to do things in this way and to follow the Messiah that we receive and in that push, Mr. Sam, let's hope that we'll have soon <coughs> the final paraduma and be able to have the purification of the of the mind to her and the hope that they can do it in the hope that we can attack it.